Do you ever get rabbit, vole, or mouse damage on your fruit trees? <laughs> Chewing the branches. Is that really the problem? Or are they indicators of a bigger problem? That's what I want to answer today. Stay tuned. You may wonder, how do rabbits and voles cause damage? Well, they eat bark. They eat the bark or they eat small twigs or they eat all the buds. You see, here's all the buds are gone. Well, is that terrible? If they eat a branch, that's not the end of the world. If they start eating your trunk, that is a problem. And they can actually kill trees, no problem at all. Well, is that a terrible thing? You know what? They need food over the winter. Rabbits do, voles do. And we need a viable population of rabbits. See, here's some of their trail, here's some of their calling cards. So rabbits that were here, in fact, see, they even cut off a small branch, ate most of all the buds. See, it was the branch from up here. If they do that, that's all right. This is a low branch. It wouldn't produce much. The worst years, I would say we lost, one year I remember we lost about 50, 50 trees completely girdled. Some regrew. You see, oh, there you even see damage that it had in another year. And if it's only, and I, my limit is 50%. If 50% of the trunk is girdled, that's my limit. I'll leave the tree. Some cases it'll grow back. The bark will re-close back up. But if it's more than 50%, I cut it. And I can cut it as long as I cut it above the graft. I can cut the tree and it will grow back. In fact, this was one that that was cut and it grew back and it's it's fine. It's multi-stem, but it's a pear tree and that's okay. Bo is doing a job back there of searching and hunting for voles. This is an easy time for her to hunt because there's there's not a deep snow yet. And so they're not hiding under the snow. Bo has located a vole that's hiding underneath this black current. Wait, wait. That's what a vole looks like. They can be feisty. They got teeth. Even a dog has to be careful. So you see, if you have a dog, it can cause damage to your plastic mulch. In this case, these are just our plastic squares. But I see, because it was in the way, we also threw, chewed through our irrigation pipe, which that's not what I like. And I see there was a patch here, so we'll change this piece in the spring. But she definitely knows there's a vole underneath here. She is the vole hunter. She knows and takes her job very seriously about finding and consuming voles that are using the orchard. Hey, I understand if you only have one or two trees, you see there's some old damage. One or two trees, then damage like that can really be a problem. But if you have a whole orchard like we have, several blocks, if I have one or two trees that show damage from voles, to me that's a bonus year. That's, that's nothing. One or two trees is uh, damaged is, is really nothing. So yes, if you have very little, then you will have to do what you can to prevent damage. You know, your one tree, you don't want to have it get all eaten down. I just want to show you the importance of having mowed strips as opposed to unmowed. So that's mowed and here, under these trees, that's, that's not mowed. And take a look what I just found here. In this wider unmowed strip, look at, look at the damage on this one. And that's all fresh. So that's quite a lot of damage. And there's the hole, and there's even there's the droppings. The vole droppings right there. 
as they chew through. So they have probably done this rootstock in. It is a rootstock of apple. But the new trees like this one, you see, chewed right around. So that's kind of what I was hoping to have the new trees grow up. And that's gone. So that's one of the reasons why you really want to limit the amount of area that's unmowed. Earlier in the winter, I had pruned some, here's some pear and even some plum branches. Interesting, I didn't know they would eat the plum buds, but they have, that's plum. And this is pear. And sure enough, the rabbit's been through and has eaten off, if you look carefully, he eats off every bud. So the buds are the most nourishing and that's what they eat first. Oh, and there's the, there's the telltale sign that the rabbit's been around here. So give them some branches. This is earlier and I see because they've cleaned these off, it's a good indication that there's not a, doesn't look like there's a bud left on any of these branches. So it's a good indication that it's time to give them some more. <laughs> and if this gets covered with snow, this won't be available at all for them uh, in the weeks coming. So there needs to be some branches that will have a little more reach, stick out a little more from the snow. This is what I mean by reach, you see? These branches reach higher up and even these higher up, that's been eaten. But the very tips of some of these, these are honey locust branches. Some of you say, well, though, there's no thorns. That's right, these are thornless honey locust. But see, the lower branches have all been eaten. That's, uh, that's about, that's a foot off the ground. So 30 centimeters, if it's a rabbit, they have no problem sitting up on their back legs and, uh, and eating. So they've eaten everything off of these, even to that one. They'll even take a branch sometimes and pull it down. So there's very little, even on a branch like this, that is sticking out and will stick out above the snow. There isn't much of it that is still available as prime food, which means buds. So here you see, see all those droppings? It's definitely sat here for a while. Bunny balls. And so their favorite is buds, then small twigs and finally bark, but you see, they haven't eaten any bark on these bigger branches. This is our brush pile, where we pile up the, the branches that we've been pruning. And you see, look how, look how nice and white that is. The voles really polished some of these branches up really well. So that's where they've been. They weren't so much in the orchard. And this hedgerow, you can still smell them, eh, Bo? Look at that. You can even see the piles of turds in there. So the voles have really, they've been at these branches along the hedgerow, and that's good. That's where I want the voles to stay. I don't want them in the orchard chewing the trees, especially don't want them chewing the trunks. Some more where they've you know, definitely, he's sat here, that rabbit, and it's eaten all the branches, all the small branches off of this one. But curiously, this is something I rarely see. So he's taken a nibble out of this black currant. And don't be too concerned if you see that kind of nibble. Like that's a nibble. You know what that is? That's a taste. I'm gonna taste this. Maybe this rabbit had never tasted black currant so it tasted it and it realized mm, you know what this is medicine it's not food so maybe it needed some medicine because black currant if you ever have just smell the bud or scrape the bark and eat a little bit of just nibble on the bark you'll see it's a very different plant from the others and so the rabbits know that and maybe they just needed to be medicated a bit and they took some black currant bark, but don't be too concerned if you see a little bit like that. That's not, that's not damage. That's just, it's normal for them to taste everything in their environment. So if you have 
a lot of damage from voles or rabbits, it means one of three things. It means one, your rodent or rabbit population is at a high level. And that's normal because voles and rabbits have cycles. Rabbits, I'm not so sure what their cycle is, but I know for voles, it tends to be three to four years. So every three or four years, you'll get a high population. And now we're definitely in the third year and we're starting to see there is quite a bit more damage this year than we've had in the past two. So they can be cyclical in their populations and if their population's high, you might have more damage. It can also mean as a second one that your trees are unprotected. Let me show you an unprotected tree here. So here's a tree that's totally unprotected. Well, if there's a lot of pressure, the bark on that tree can get eaten. However, I know from experience that that's not the first thing they'll go for. They would much rather go for these small branches. And that's why it's important that we leave branches that are low to the ground because they'll always go for those branches instead of going for the bark. They also prefer, now that's a pretty big trunk. They much prefer a much smaller trunk. So something like this, oh, look at that. Something like this, they went for the new growth there. But it's this part that they would, if it's, if it's smooth, it's far more delectable than when it's actually scaly dry bark. Do I have an older one here? No, so the, the, the age of the bark makes a big difference. They always like young, tender. So if they have a choice, they'll go for the fruit buds. So that's fruit buds on here. Fat, very nutritious, lots of stores of energy for the fruit and the flowers next spring. They'll go secondly for the bark of the small branches. Then if there's none of that available, they'll go for the bark on bigger branches. And last, and really only last, if it's not available, they'll go for the trunk. And if the trunk is scaly like this, it's not very, not nearly as appealing as one that's smoother and younger. So they have a preference. A third reason you might have a lot of damage is that your rodent population just doesn't have enough food available. Their normal food would be things like seeds. It would be bark of other trees and shrubs. In this case, you see that's the gumi. They went for that for sure. Well, that's okay. That's our nitrogen fixer. And I know that that will regrow vigorously. <laughs> Love those chickadees. See, even the chickadees know where there's some seed and food available. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please! Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Are voles and rabbits and mice really the problem? Are they an indicator of some other problem? You know, if you can't beat them, feed them. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.